chapter 79. A Psalm of Asaph. O God, the heathen are come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have made Jerusalem into heaps. They have given the dead bodies of your servants to be food unto the fowls of the heaven, the flesh of your saints unto the beast of the earth. They have shed their blood like water round about Jerusalem, with none to bury them. We are, come, we are become a taunt to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to them that are round about us. How long, O Lord, wilt you be angry forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath upon the nations that know you not, and upon the kingdoms that call not upon your name. For they have devoured Jacob, and laid waste his habitation. Re remember not against us the iniquities of our forefathers. Let your compassion speedily come to meet us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the sake of the glory of your name, and deliver us, and forgive our sins, and for, for your name's sake. Wherefore should the nation say, Where is their God? Let the avenging of your servant's blood that is shed be made known among the nations in our sight. Let the groaning of the prisoners come before you, according to the greatness of your power, set free those that are appointed to death, and render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach, wherewith they have reproached you, O Lord. So we that are your people and the flock of your pasture will give you thanks forever. We will tell of your praise to all generations. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. Once again, now we have a psalm. This is more like a prayer, uh, I would think, but uh, a psalm, it's something to call to remembrance now uh, these periods where actually we could probably apply this psalm to um, Asaph or Asaph is the gatherer and we're going to go ahead and pick it up here uh, in verse 1 O God the heathen are come into your inheritance they have defiled your holy temple they have made Jerusalem into heaps so this is going to be a prayer now during this period of time where the enemy, uh, obviously the heathen, the heathen are simply those that don't have a the understanding of God. It wasn't given; it was given to Israel with, by, through the law. Uh, the knowledge uh, was given to them uh, for a purpose to show you that God can choose, God can pick, and the, all the other nations God had caused to bow down to. Sticks and stones, idols, creations of men's understandings. But to Israel, uh, to the house of Jacob, he did not. And this was this was brought forth through the descendants of Abraham. This is just well-known facts. And that's the inheritance that we're talking about. Uh, they've defiled your holy temple. Oh, the temple is the place where God put his name as we're going to find that reference to. And the name is, is as I said, it's the Shem. And so it's the personification of the individual itself. It's not the presence of them, but the presence of the understanding that they exist. But they have made Jerusalem into heaps. Jerusalem is that place of peaceful teachings. That's literally what it means, and that's what it always has been the place of peaceful teachings. It was Salem in the past. It was uh, the city of the Jebusites in the past. But it's always been that stronghold, that stronghold, that place where God's been making an example of for much, much time, too. They have given the dead bodies of your servants to be food unto the fowls of heaven, the flesh of your saints unto the beast of the earth. They, and we're talking still about the heathen, that's those that come against God's understanding and his knowledge. But they've given the dead bodies of your servants to be food to the fowls of the heaven. The dead bodies are um, that, that, which is in, that which is sinned. It's the dead bodies that have sinned. They've given them over to the food and to the fowls of heaven. These fowls of heaven, heavens are the understandings, those things that are above the understanding, knowledge, wisdom that you don't have. And the fowls of them 
are those that swoop down. These are the ones of, of darkness. The shadow under the wing is death. And they prey upon the flesh of men uh, who have went astray from God's understanding. And the flesh of your saints and to the beasts of the earth. These flesh of the saints, uh, but, uh, they also, the, the saints are the anointed ones. That's, that's those ones that are supposedly have God's understanding. And these beasts of the earth, oh, these are the ones that rip and tear. They, they try to uh, tempt uh, the flesh, so to speak, away from the understanding of God, uh, which he gave you in the beginning. Three, they have shed their blood like water round about Jerusalem with none to bury them. And they shed their blood like water. Uh, uh, you know the this water's understanding. Blood is the is sin. Oh, we should look at it as a life, or what gives it its life within us. It's like water, uh, and we could use it like water to give us some understanding. It's all around Jerusalem, that a city of peaceful teachings, with none to bury them. They. None to bury them, or nobody going to suffer them. Put them in a grave. They, actually, the the this the the testimony. It's like a testimony land there. A, a dead body would be. For we are become a taunt to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to them that are round about us. And a taunt is something to be made fun of to our neighbors that everybody around is looking upon and saying, "Aha." so to speak, uh -huh. they, they are being destroyed. Five, how long, O oh Lord, will you be angry forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? And it would be during these periods of time we can see the judgment of God. How long will your anger burn? And uh, will you be angry forever? Is your judgment going to last forever, so to speak, is what this is saying. Uh, your jealousy burn like fire because we'll find this is periods of idolatry. These are periods of idolatry when the heathen come in with their understandings, with their knowledge and their 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 uh, their their understanding of darkness, I should say, and they begin to spread it around. And the people of God, uh, those ones that. Uh, have understanding or have a little bit of knowledge or tempted away because what happens is you, they become settled, settled, so to speak, in, in that and not ever seeking. Six, pour out your wrath upon the nations that know you not and upon the kingdoms that call not upon your name. Pour out your wrath. The wrath of God is a great judgment and anger. And we see that it's exactly what God has done in the earth. And he's done it to all the kingdoms that call not upon the name of God. Uh, call upon Hashem, that holy name. Uh, it's really a very simple thing. We should be communicating to God. God did that. God did that. That's who we're going to say done it every time because that's what we'll find. It was here when I got here. Uh, God has a way of leaving a mark in the earth. And it's clear to see that God has left his mark here. Seven, for they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his habitation. For they have devoured Jacob and they have laid waste his habitation. Almost. If it was possible, but we'll find out. There's always a few of, of great strength that hold out. Now, God saves a remnant. God saves a remnant. He always will. Eight, remember not against us the iniquities of our forefathers. And let your compassion speedily come to meet us, for we are brought very low. Remember not against us the iniquities of our fathers. And for we know that the, 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 the son's not responsible for the sin of his father. Neither is the father responsible for the sin of his son. See, but each are responsible for their own sin. Everybody, individually and as a whole. See, we are responsible. Uh, God said, you, 
and unless you take up that responsibility, you have to pick up your responsibility for your iniquities. Every generation does. And we would ask that, that these that the iniquities could be forgotten. See, that, that we could forget about those things. But we'll find out this is going to take a little period of time, and it, and it simply comes from not teaching your children the law. That's what we spoke about yesterday. Nine, help us, O God of our salvation, for the sake of the glory of your name, and deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Help us, O God of our salvation, the God that saves, Hashem, is who it is. It's it's. The God of Jacob, it's the only God there is. There is no other. And we'll find out almost every, every, every understanding almost under the sun today uh, that has any great foundation is based upon these understandings. Unfortunately, there's, there's just many that don't think they have to obey the law. They don't have, think they have to keep the ordinances and statutes of God. And we see the sin run rampant because of these things in the earth, in the flesh. Not only in the flesh, but in the in understanding. It, it, it's kind of a coexisting thing, see. If you don't, if you don't uh, follow God's law, both in understanding and in the flesh, then we're going to find out there's going to be sin. One way or the other, see. Sin is simply uh, to violate the ordinances of God. It's a simple thing. It's not a hard thing. Well, if you want to know what right and wrong is, there's the line. That's what, dis that's what the decides the line. But God gave thee the law in the beginning. God's going to uphold his statutes. God's going to uphold his, his ordinances and statutes. And it, it doesn't matter who you are. Once you get outside that, you're just going to get the effects of it. And we're talking about the blessing. Once you get outside the blessing, you're going to get the effects of that. And, that, and that's not the blessing. It's just a very simple thing. Ten, wherefore should the nation say, where is their God? Let the avenging of your servant's blood that is shed be made known among the nations in our sight. Wherefore should the, why should the nations say, where is their God? Well, see, your understanding sticks and stones where he is. Well, he's, he's right behind you. He's right beside you. He's all around you. He's everywhere. This, this is... Uh, would be God is uh, he exists in a period of time where the where it's pure where it's righteous where it is he's waiting for you there see that's where God's at God's not going to come to this polluted uh, immoral unjust people upon the earth such as this he watches over his flock, those that are righteous, those that trust in God, those that observe God's ordinances. But he ain't going to come to a unrighteous people. Yeah, we got to. You got to be righteous before God. You got to meet God there. See, because that's where we're all heading, ain't it? Ain't ain't we working towards perfection? Eleven. Let the groaning of the prisoner come before you according to the greatness of your power. Set free those that are appointed to death. Let the groaning of, uh, of the prisoner come before you. Uh, well, we'll find out. God, God's the one that controls everything. He's got you locked up in your understanding. If you make prayer unto God, if you come to God and, and say, I want to need some help. We'll find out God's great to help you, because but you'll have to make the first step. Set free those that are appointed to death. That, those that are appointed to death are those that are judged. When you're found in your sin, you're appointed to death. It's a very simple thing. God says when you sin, you die. Turn. 
You have the ability to turn even in death. See, even in death, when you're dead, you can turn to God if you have the ability. And But God does set free those that are appointed to death, those that turn from their sin, which is death. God says, live. Twelve, and render unto our neighbors sevenfold in their bosom their reproach, wherewith they have reproached you, O Lord. Rend unto our neighbors. Our neighbors. These would be those that are around you, that are coming against you. Why would your neighbor come against you? Well, he wouldn't be happy with you. It's something he feels like you're coming against him. But sevenfold into their bosom, their reproach. Sevenfold. Seven means to finish it up, accomplish it. Um, it's it's done. It's ended. Uh, in 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 kind of that aspect, it's over. To to just finish it up. To and we'll find out. This was a rightful recompense, is what this is known as. Is or a. It's like the eye for an eye. It's an equal thing. This. This judgment that's folded up here, we could say. And we'll find out that's just what God did. See, God brought uh, Israel through the way of un finally understanding who God is. Uh, I took some time. Yeah, I took some time to understand these things, that God is not these sticks and stones. That's not who God is. See, uh, and sooner or later, all the nations are going to come to this understanding. It's really a very simple thing. Uh, when they can get over the understanding that men have, when they can get past that little bit of knowledge, see, then maybe they can get to the understanding of God, knowledge of God, the law which you give you in the beginning. You can't even figure that part out. We'll find out. Uh, just like Israel, they was... Everybody kind of stuck on number two there. Three. So we that are your people and the flock of your pasture will give you thanks forever. We will tell of your praise to all generations. That we, your people, uh, will give thanks forever. Well, it's a good thing to have in remembrance that we can see these that other people have to suffer like like we do. But you know the thing is, is we don't want nobody to suffer. We don't want nobody under that kind of understanding. It just helps to perpetuate. See, and it, I I would I would question it, it to the law is what I would do. We don't want to cause the next generation to go to sin. We don't want to want to lead them off after, even if their parents are in sin. You know, uh, it's easy enough to say you need to take a good look around uh, to everybody, and everybody just needs to take a good look around, and try to figure it out for themselves. We'll see that it's no great secret. It's no, there's nothing hard to understand. Right and wrong, just plain. It's a plain thing. It's not hard to grasp, but we can use the law of God, God's understanding, to weigh it out. And we can see that if we, once we measure it up against that, it really just starts making itself known more and more. The Torah is the torch. It's a light we can see by. It's really a simple thing. Uh, we can take that. We're going to use it as a balance on the scale, so to speak, and, and weigh everything out against it. But this should be the 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 a, a common understanding. This this should be a common understanding by now. Uh, as we approach a this so-called we have a so-called great technology in the earth. But what good's technology? What good's technology if all you're going to use it for is war? We're going to move forward. Psalms. 80, turn and return.